All right, let's go look at our lab, kcmos port IO, and you're gonna compile that and run it on the debugger and then look at the output in WinDebug. And what you hope to see is that the time information matches up with the stuff that we said back here. Index zero should be seconds, two minutes, etc. So let's take a look at that. In your labs, go to kcmos port IO, open up source.c, and the code of consequence is relatively small here. We've just got a 256 byte array because we're gonna read both the standard and the extended CMOS bytes. And then we got some indices. We're gonna do some for loops. The first for loop is gonna read the standard bytes. And to do that, it is going to write out a single byte to the index register 70. And so it's gonna write out byte i. i starts at zero. So we're starting at index zero into index seven, into port 70. Then we are going to read in a single byte from port 71. So behind the scenes, this is an in-assembly instruction. This is just, you know, the compiler intrinsic in-assembly instruction with a byte size from port 71. That's going to go back into the CMOS character array. Then to read the extended portion, we're going to have another index J, which we're going to start at zero and move into port 72 instead of 70, because that's how we access the extended area. And then we are going to read in from port 73 instead of 71. And that's going to be put into CMOS at I. So I will just keep incrementing. J will give us another loop through the bottom for through these extended 128 bytes. So let's go ahead and compile that. And then we're gonna take the output from the compilation, copy it over to our VM and see it in the debugger. So as usual, copy the entire path of your compiled data compiled executable, put it into Explorer, grab the three binaries. I already did it, forgot to clean it up. So here's my new binary. And then I can just go up to this, hit install, run it, and go check out my output over in Windabug. So here is the output streaming out. So let's go up and see what we see as the time when it was actually started. So we go back to index zero just enough space. So index zero, it said seconds 15, minutes 53, hours 11. So 11, 53, and, 50, and 15 seconds. And indeed in YVM, 11, 53, and, and however many seconds was. And then this is 6, 15, 20, 21. So 20, 21, 6, 15. So that CMOS data exactly matches the real time clock information we expect. And then, you know, we have a bunch of other random data. And, you know, what is it? I don't know. How would you find out? Well, you would have to do something like set a hardware breakpoint on port IO for the ports 70 and or 72, and then, you know, just set the, the debugger to basically say, like, let's check what the, and then you would say, like, let's check the particular value in particular registers, and if it's the value, you know, for the particular index that you're interested in, then, you know, you would say, okay, that now I can go look at the code in the you know, operating system or whatever that's actually accessing this. All right, let's look beyond the base range and into the extended range, and we do indeed see some additional data being used here. Again, what is the data? I have no idea. The only way to find out is to basically, you know, either reverse engineer something statically or dynamically. And dynamically would be using these hardware breakpoints to see what it is.